When you talk about kind of the structure and the buildup of an organization, having somebody or multiple people like that yes. is an incredible benefit to the growth of the organization, mm -hmm. probably both within kind of the walls of the offices, but also probably at times for the bottom line of the company as well. Of course, right. So this is about how do we build our capacity in the organization, having the right people in the roles to, to really make sure that we are succeeding and are rising to levels of excellence in our organization, right? And so we want to choose people who are excellent and who can be excellent. And so having somebody who is willing to go out on a limb for you and put their own reputation. So when I'm a sponsor and I'm you know, promoting somebody, I'm also putting my sure. reputation yeah. on the line yeah. as a good spotter of talent and somebody who's trusted so that the next time around somebody's gonna listen to me, right? And so as somebody who wants to be sponsored, Making sure that you earn the trust of the sponsor is a really critical characteristic that allows that sponsor to go out on the limb for you, right? Somebody who's dependable, somebody who hits their marks, who is, you know, able to show excellence in terms of their performance and their skills, but also trustworthiness. Right. Those are really critical qualities that sponsors look for in sponsees. And so I guess the, the hope is in terms of the conversation around women in the workplace, the more women you have moving up to the executive roles or leadership roles within companies, then the more opportunities you have for women to connect and be able to develop that relationship, that sponsor relationship with that person and can continue to, to move them up the ladder in, within the corporation. Absolutely, but also to recognize that women could sponsor men, men could sponsor women, all of that can happen. The key is having women in these roles, what I think the difference that makes is it creates an accessibility, right? A, a stereotype, if you will, or a role model that creates the potential for other people to see those women as having the leadership potential, if you will, right? So that matching process becomes easier when you have women in the C-suite or in the executive ranks because other people say, oh yeah, that's a possibility. Sure. And we can see how that works and how it's effective. So then what do you think are, are some of the recommendations that we need to consider when we're thinking about mentors versus sponsors in the workplace? I have two key recommendations, Dan. One from the perspective of the mentee or sponsee, right? The employee who is potentially needing mentorship or sponsorship. That recommendation is you need to be intentional and proactive. It doesn't just come to you. You need to actually enact that. You need to seek out mentors, you need to seek out sponsors, and you need to show that you are worthy of their trust. From the sponsor perspective, my recommendation is that you need to recognize that this is an active part of your job. You need to source talent from people in the organization, and you need to be really intentional about learning about what, who, who's in the organization, what their skill sets are, what might be a good fit for them, and be intentional about trying to not just recommend the same people all the time. Thank you for listening to The Ripple Effect. We hope you found this episode informative and engaging. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review so that we can continue to bring you the best insight from the Wharton School.